Individuals from around the world have been dyeing eggs to celebrate Easter for thousands of years. And if you're one of the individuals who'll be dyeing eggs to celebrate Easter this Sunday, I'm going to show you in this video how you can use natural materials such as red cabbage juice to dye your eggs instead of using store-bought kits. I'm also going to demonstrate some experiments you can conduct with eggs while you're waiting for your eggs to absorb the pigments from the dyes. The first natural dye we're going to look at is red cabbage. Buy a head of red cabbage and cut off a chunk of it. You'll need as much cabbage and water for as many eggs as you're going to be dyeing. And this is about the size chunk I have and I'm going to place it in a little over one cup of water. Then I'm going to place it into the microwave for about three minutes. Within a few minutes after taking it out of the microwave, the water will become darker and darker as more pigments are extracted out of the cabbage juice from the heat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this cabbage juice into one of these cups. And I'm just going to take one hard boiled egg and I'm going to place it into the cabbage juice where we're going to let that soak to absorb the purple pigment from that cabbage juice. The next natural material I'm going to use is beet juice. And I'm just going to simply pour some beet juice into a cup and I'll add my egg to the beet juice. The reason you add vinegar to your store-bought dye kits or for when you're using natural materials is to brighten the colors up. So I'm just going to add a little bit of vinegar to my existing beet juice and my red cabbage juice there. The next natural material I'm going to use is going to be spinach leaves. Take spinach leaves, put them inside the blender, as well as adding some hot water. And the hot water will just kind of speed up the process of extracting the chlorophyll from the spinach leaves. I'm lucky I don't even have to dye eggs green because my chicken here, Chicklet, lays one green egg every day. She's enjoying her uh, carrot cake cookie. The next step to get your chlorophyll from the spinach leaves is to pour your liquid material through a strainer catching all the pieces of the spinach leaves and our strainer and we're going to place our egg into the liquid. The next egg is going to be green from the chlorophyll extracted from the spinach leaves. The next natural material I'm going to use to dye my eggs is going to be turmeric which is a spice and you're going to place about three tablespoons of turmeric into your cup or bowl of water and you can even heat that up to kind of help dissolve the turmeric, which it won't completely dissolve anyways. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm actually going to use a white crayon to make a design on my egg. And I'm using white so that the color doesn't show up. And the reason we use a crayon is because a crayon contains wax and the wax will repel the water. So I'm going to place my egg into the turmeric and this egg obviously is going to be an orange yellow color. The fact that we're using natural materials, your eggs are going to need to soak a lot longer. This is the cold dyeing method. You could do the same process by boiling your eggs within the different materials that I've shown here. We're waiting for our eggs to absorb the pigment. Let's conduct a few experiments and find out a little bit more about eggs. If you're dyeing eggs with young children, the first thing you can do is talk about where do eggs come from. Well, animals lay eggs. The majority of animals are egg layers except for the mammals. And even amongst the mammals, there are egg-laying mammals such as the duck-billed platypus and the spiny anteater. Eggs come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. Eggshell will either be hard like a bird egg or the eggshell may be soft and rubbery like a reptile and amphibian egg. The first experiment I'm going to do while we're waiting for our eggs to absorb pigment, I'm going to take some eggshells and I'm going to crush them up and we're going to place them inside of the test tube. Now I'm going to add some vinegar, which is acetic acid, to the eggshells. Place the balloon over the test tube. And you can see that our balloon has now inflated and it's filling up with carbon dioxide as a result of a chemical reaction taking place between the vinegar and the eggshell, the calcium carbonated eggshell. Next experiment we're going to conduct is we're going to take a regular egg you would buy from a store. It has to be a raw egg and we're going to cover it with vinegar. Make sure you're wearing your goggles. You want to leave the egg overnight 
completely submerged in vinegar. Now what's going to happen is that the acidic acid is going to break down the calcium carbonate of the shell. And the next day you're going to be left with a rubbery egg. An egg where the hard outside covering has dissolved by the vinegar reacting with that calcium carbonate. Now this egg here is very similar to reptile and amphibian eggs. So because the shell has dissolved, we now have a rubbery egg. Let's just see if it can bounce. And you can see the egg is indeed bouncing. You can even take a ruler and measure how high it can bounce. Our last experiment we're going to conduct with eggs is we're going to take two eggs. One has been cooked, hard boiled, and the other one is raw. And I'm going to spin the eggs. Based on how these eggs spin, you can actually determine whether one is raw or one has been cooked. So there we have one egg, and there's our second egg. Obviously a big difference at the rate at which they're spinning. Do you know which one is which? Which is the hard cooked and which is the raw? One that has been cooked actually spins the fastest. All the materials are solid, they're moving at the same rate. Notice this one here is spinning much slower. The materials inside are a liquid and they're sloshing back and forth. We're going to check the status of our eggs that we've been dyeing. This is the egg that was in the turmeric, so it's a somewhat orange yellowish color. A light green tint from the spinach leaves. Dark pink from the beet juice. And a very light lavender from the red cabbage juice. And I'm just going to let these eggs soak for about another 30 minutes. The longer you let them soak, the darker their color, obviously. You were able to pick up some good tips for using natural materials to dye your Easter eggs this Sunday, as well as some cool and simple science experiments to conduct with eggs while you're waiting for your eggs to absorb those pigments from nature. Chicklet and I wish you a happy Easter.